All right, so today I'm going to show you how to um, get uh, a local uh, large language model running on a Windows machine, and we're going to be performing some basic RAG operations uh, with that large language model. Um, we're going to be using PhiData. Um, PhiData is an open source package that allows you to create assistance um, and, um, using Python. Uh, and then you can also have those assistants do cool things uh, through function calling. Um, so I'm going to skip the installation of Olama. Um, for those who need that help, you can go to Olama, Windows, install, and you can just download it right here. Pretty, that, that part's pretty straightforward. Uh, and so we're just going to make sure that we have Olama activated. Should we do? Okay. So let's just go through these instructions. Um, let's go ahead and pull down Phi 3. Perfect. Um, now. Got to pull down the embedding model too. Nice. Okay, so this is where we need to update the documentation. Um, this assumes that you're on a Unix-based system, so the, these commands will this command will work for Linux and Mac, uh, but it's not going to work on Windows. So we got to do some some stuff for that. Um, so. Before we create the virtual environment, let's actually kind of see where where this code is located. Um, so it's in cookbook, large language models, Olama rag. So um, we're going to need to clone clone this this folder. So let's make a directory called PhiData um, examples. We'll CD into it. And now we're going to clone it. So I'm just going to open up a new tab. And then I already have the GitHub CLI installed. Um, if you do need help installing the GitHub CLI, just put a uh, comment in the YouTube video, and I'll, I'll make a video on how to do that. Uh, but for now, just hit go ahead and clone this. And then I'm going to go back to the PhiData cookbooks examples. Okay, now we are going to we're going to we're going to change directory all the way. Uh, well, we could actually watch. So let's see what's in there. So we have in this PhiData examples we have one folder which is PhiData. So what we could do is we can CD into Phi data. Um, and you can see that one of the folders in here should be cookbook, which is right. Yep, Phi data cookbook. So that's just basically pointing. So, so now we kind of have an understanding that there's some, some code in, in, at this file path. So what we'll do is we could actually create our virtual environment from here. So uh, Windows, Python, dash m then and then a then so this will this is what this is doing is it's using python's native virtual environment module so python module its virtual environment and then we're just giving it a name this is arbitrary um, so you could name it then you could name it a then you could name it anything um, so we'll just keep it as the instructions say Aven. And then, so this is going to create the virtual environment within this file path. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to activate it. Um, and so why, why do we want to do this? Well, um, when we're running Python code, we want the dependencies to be, um, uh, you know, so basically we don't want to like, it have a bunch of dependencies that we're not going to need. Um, and so what PhiData is telling us is like, hey, here are the dependencies. 
we're telling you exactly what you need. Uh, that w so that that way we don't have to like, uh, you know, uh, m you know, mix dependencies when we're running this code. Um, so we'll do pip install. Actually, we'll just copy this command. Okay. Now. Next step is that we're going to have to run this thing called PG vector. Um, so you could just think of this as a, a database uh, that's going to give the assistant knowledge. Uh, so the assistant is going to be able to use this database to like look up um, um, either docu documents that you upload to it, like through a PDF, or if you give it a URL, it'll be able to scrape the URL and throw it into this database. Um, Okay, so we have, oh, yep, you know what? I didn't activate the virtual environment. So what I did is I went and created the virtual environment, but I didn't activate it. So I installed all these requirements on my base uh, Python, um, uh, my, my base Python uh, kernel. And so what we'll need to do is uh, we'll need to actually activate it. So how do we activate this within um, within Windows? Uh, so so super simple. It's a one line command. So we'll do it. We'll do the name of the virtual environment, scripts, and then activate dot bat. And then we're gonna run the install. Okay, so now how we know it was activated is because these parentheses. And so it's installing all those requirements on that dependency or on that uh, on the in, in this activated virtual environment. Okay, um, so install Docker. Okay, so why do we need to install Docker? So what Fidata did this open source uh repository in there they're also a company what they did is they built a uh they built code for us so that we can just run a database without having to like um go through all the hard steps of uh cr creating a database by hand so they they went and made it for us and they said look you can download this this running database uh this running this running code that will give the large language model a database to use um, all you got to do is uh, run this command. But what happens is, is if I plug this into my Windows terminal, I'm going to get a bunch of errors. Okay, why is that? It's because again, th this is written in un uh, it's a Unix code. It's not it's not ready for like a Windows uh, command line. So let's actually just go over to ChatGPT, and I've already asked it. I just basically said translate. Uh, the code so that I can run on command line. So I said translate this to command line. So that's what it did here. So we'll copy that. Right click, paste. Okay, so what error are we getting? We're saying that the Docker daemon isn't running. Okay, so this assume so this assumes that I've already installed Docker. Um, and so how do I verify that installation? Um, uh, I'm going to just search for it on the command line or so on the, on my search bar, I just typed in Docker desktop and it came, it came up. And so now I'm turning on, uh, the app Docker. Uh, and again, Docker allows us to use the code that Phi data already wrote for PG vector. We don't have to create a new vector store database. This is something that's already done for us. We just got to pull it down. And so while that's getting started, I'm going to go ahead and re rerun the Docker code. And you can see down here that it's 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 working. So we we know we have Docker installed. And copy that. Okay, it looks like it's done running. Oh, made the same mistake. Let's come here, copy this code. 
paste. Okay. Okay, this is what I mean. So what happened was it said, hey, if, if this PhiData PG vector Docker image is available, again, running code that PhiData already built for us, then use it. Otherwise, they're going to pull it. So right now they're pulling it um, from a repository somewhere. Uh, so this Docker command, what it's going to do, it's going to run the image for us. So um, if it didn't find it, it's going to pull it. But after it pulls it, it's going to run it. And we're going to verify that's going to be running using Docker Desktop. So we're going to come here. We're going to click here. So we have we have some some volumes. Okay, PG volume. That must be what's running Docker. The the PG vector. So what I'm guessing. We can see PG vector. We can see Phi data. Cool. It looks like it's running. Great. So now we don't have to do anything. We don't. Let's let's continue with the instructions, but we're not going to have to do anything else for Docker. Okay. The next step is we're going to run our rag app. So the next command is streamlit run cookbook um, app.py. So let's copy that. And then we're going to paste it in here. And then we're going to go to localhost. I'm just going to pop open another window here to show you um, which Olama models I have. So we'll do Olama list. So we only have 5.3. So I, if I, I won't be able to run Llama 3 because uh, I don't have it. In fact, it'll probably throw an error. Um, we're going to have to change that to 5.3. Five, uh, five yeah, no, no Llama 3 found. OK. No problem. What about what about five three? Hello. Okay. And so when we ran Streamlit, um, so what happened was is it created the Llama three assistant. Um, I don't have Llama three, so it threw an error. And now. Uh, and now it's running. And now it's running Phi three. Um, it's still responding to hello, which is um, taking a little little while here. Just kind of curious to see how much load it is on my system. It's working hard. Um, but what you can do is, while this is running, what you can do is you can actually upload your files and then you can add URLs. So um, if you have a URL in mind, you can paste it here, add it. It will, um, it'll, it'll, It'll scrape that content and throw it into the vector store. Oh, we got a response. Great. Took a while. Uh, so you can then you can also do a PDF. So if you have a PDF, you can upload it, and um, this will perform basic rag operations. So I hope this was helpful in setting up the Phi Data Assistant on the Windows machine. Uh, again, leave a comment if you guys have any questions.